Hello, welcome to Flat Earth Admiral, please press the red subscribe button to get notification on our video update. Whether at sea level, the top of Mount Everest, or flying a hundred thousand feet in the air, the always horizontal horizon line always rises up to meet the eye level of the observer and remains perfectly flat. You can test for yourself on a beach or hilltop, in a large field or desert, aboard a hot air balloon or helicopter, you will see the panoramic horizon ascend with you and remain completely level all around. If the Earth were actually a big wall, however, the horizon should sink as you ascend, not rise to your eye level, and it would dip at each end of your periphery, not remain flat all around. Standing in a rising balloon, you would have to look downwards to the horizon, the highest point of the ball earth would be directly beneath you and declining on each side. In an editorial from the London Journal, July 18, 1857, one journalist described quite the opposite in his book. Balloon is a peculiarity of the people. With a high at an elevation of two miles, causing the surface of the Earth to appear concave instead of convex, and to recede during the rapid ascent, whilst the 33 horizon and the balloon seem to be stationary. Jay Glacier wrote in his travels in the air that on looking over the top of the car, the horizon appeared to me on the level with the eye, and taking a grand view of the whole visible area beneath, I was struck with its great regularity. Always the wharf to one plane, it seemed too flat. M. Victory Manuel, another hot air balloonist, wrote that, instead of the earth declining from the view on either side, and the higher part being under the car, as is popularly supposed, it was the exact opposite, the lowest part, like a huge basin, being immediately under the car, and the horizon on all sides rising to the level of the eye. Yet another American hot air balloonist, Mr. Elliot wrote, the air in Ott may well be the most skeptical man about the rotundity of the earth. Philosophy forces the truth upon us, but the view of the earth from the elevation of the balloon is that of an immense terrestrial basin, the deeper part of which is directly under one feet. And in Mayhew's great world of London, one there and not recorded that another curious effect of the aerial ascent was that the Earth, when we were at our greatest altitude, positively appeared concave, looking like a huge dark bowl, rather than the convex sphere such as we naturally expect to see it. The horizon always appeared to be on the level with our eye, and seems to rise as we rise, until at length the elevation of the circular boundary line of the site becomes so marked that the Earth assumes the anomalous appearance as we have said of a concave rather than a convex body. Amateurs have sent balloons to heights of over 121,000 feet. And you can watch video online of the horizon rising with the camera and remaining perfectly flat 360 degrees. NASA videos and other official sources, however, such as the recent vertical sky to that 128,000 feet have been cut adding fake curvature to the Earth via wide-angle lenses and post-production work. Panoramic photos at top. 34. Mount Everest also often claimed to be displaying Earth's curvature, but this is simply the result of distortions and limitations inherent in wide-angle lenses. The full extent of NASA's camera trickery and doctored CGI sphere pictures, videos will be exposed in detail later. The camera distorted horizons have always been a misleading factor with those who have not freed their 
mines from the planetor low earth indoctrination three or four years ago the usas book with science horizons carried a note to the effect that the americans hoped to produce a lens which would not distort level horizons so far i am not aware that such a to truer photography has yet been made available flat earthists however can prove that due to the known laws of perspective, the horizon optically rises and remains level with the observers or the camera's eye, no matter what height is achieved. In fact, the Earth immediately beneath the moon, airplane, rocket, or capsule presents a dish shaped or concave appearance. The point of Earth immediately below the vehicle is the lowest, it is not the highest point of globe earth with a dip or curvature of the ball sweeping away downwards to a horizon far away below the eye level samuel shenton the plain truth if the earth were actually a big ball 25,000 miles in circumference the horizon would be noticeably curved even at sea level and everything on our approaching the horizon would appear to tilt backwards slightly from your perspective distant buildings along the horizon would all look like cleaning towers of pizza falling away from the sky the observer a hot air balloon taking off and drifting steadily away from you and a ball earth would slowly and constantly appear to lean back more and more the farther away it flew, the bottom of the basket coming gradually into view as the top of the balloon disappears from sight. In reality, however, buildings, balloons, trees, people, anything and everything at right angles to the horizon remains so regardless the distance of the observer. surface must be level, and therefore the Earth is a plane. This may be proved to be the case, by erecting at a suitable elevation on the sea. Sure, a duly leveled board, or a string, at right angles to a plumb line, tightly stretched between two vertical poles, on looking towards the sea, a horizontal line for a distance of 20 miles may be easily observed, and throughout its entire Length it will be found to coincide with a straight edge, or string, but if the Earth were a globe, the horizontal line would form an arc of 20 miles in length, curving both ways from the center, at the rate of 8 inches, multiplied by the square of the distance, hence the horizontal line at either end of the distance ought to be depressed some 66 feet below the horizon in the center. But as no such appearance is ever presented, it necessarily follows that the Earth cannot be a globe, or other than a plane. B. Charles Brown, The Zetetic Volume 1 Number 1, July 1872 Anyone can prove the sea horizon perfectly straight on the entire Earth perfectly flat, using nothing more than a level tripods and a wooden plank at any altitude above sea level simply fix a 6 12 foot long smooth level board that lies upon tripods and observe the skyline from eye level behind it the distant horizon will always align perfectly parallel with the upper edge of the board furthermore if you move in a half circle from one end of the board to the other whilst observing the skyline over the upper edge, you will be able to trace a clear, flat 10 20 miles depending on your altitude. This would be impossible if the Earth were a globe and a surface of water convex. If the Earth were actually a globe 25,000 miles in circumference, the horizon 36 would align over the center of the board but then gradually, noticeably decline. Just 10 miles on each side would necessitate an easily visible curvature of 66.6 feet from each end to the center. 
it is known that the horizon at sea, whatever distance it may extend to the right and left of the observer on land, always appears as a straight line. The following experiment has been tried in various parts of the country. At Brighton, on a rising ground near the race course, two poles were fixed in the earth six yards apart and directly opposite the sea. Between these poles a line was tightly stretched parallel to the horizon. From the center of the line the view embraced not less than 20 miles on each side making a distance of 40 miles. A vessel was observed sailing directly westwards. The line caught the rigging a little above the bulwarks, which it did for several hours or until the vessel had sailed the hill. Distance of 40 miles. The ship coming into view from the east would have to ascend an inclined plane for 20 miles until it arrived at the center of the arm. Once it would have to descend for the same distance, the square of 20 miles multiplied by 8 inches gives 266 feet as the amount the vessel would be below the line at the beginning and at the end of the 40 miles. Dr. Samuel Rodenfell, Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not at Will, 20, from the Highland near Portsmouth Harbor in Hampshire, England looking across Spithead to the island. Wide, the entire base of the island, where water and land come together, composes a perfectly straight line 22 statship miles long. According to the Baller theory, the Isle of Wight should decline 80 feet from the center on each side to account for the necessary curvature. The crosshairs of a good theodolite directed there, however, have repeatedly shown the land and waterline to be perfectly level. On a clear day from the highland near Douglas Harbour on the Isle of Man, the whole length of the coast of North Wales is often plainly visible to the naked eye. From the point of air at the mouth of the River Dee to Hole Eye Head, comprises a 50-mile stretch which has also been repeatedly found to be perfectly horizontal. If the Earth actually had curvature of 8 inches per mile squared, as NASA and modern astronomy claim the 50 mile length of Welsh coast sea. 37. Along the horizon in Liverpool Bay would have to decline from the center point. A easily detectable 416 feet on each side. But as such declination, or downwind, cannot be detected. being visible to the eye, or incapable of detection by any optical or mathematical means whatever. This question is especially important when it is considered that at the same distance, and on the upper outline of the same land, changes of level of only a few yards extend are quickly and unmistakably perceptible. If a man is guided by evidence and reason, and influenced by love of truth and consistency, he cannot longer maintain that the earth is a globe. He must feel that to do so is to war with the evidence of his senses, to deny that any importance attaches to fact and experiment, to ignore entirely the value of logical process, and to cease to rely upon practical induction. Dr. Samuel Robotham, Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe 28. The measurable non-curvature of the flat Earth. NASA and modern astronomers claim we are living on an oddly spheroid. 25,000 statute miles in equatorial circumference with a curvature of 7.935 inches to the mile, varying inversely as the square of the distance, meaning in 3 miles. There is a declination of nearly 6 feet, in 30 miles 600 feet, in 300 miles 60,000 feet and so on. Therefore, if we wish to prove or disprove the validity of their convexity claim, it is a fairly simple, straightforward matter of measurements and calculations. 38. 
for example, the distance across the Irish Sea from the Isle of Mans Douglas Harbour to Great Horns and in North Wales is 60 miles. If the Earth was a globe then the surface of the water between them would form a 60 mile arc. The center towering 1,944 feet higher than the coastlines at either end. It is well known and easily verifiable, however, that on a clear day, this altitude of 100 feet, the Great Orm's head is visible from Douglas Harbor. This would be completely impossible on a globe of 25,000 miles. Assuming the 100 foot altitude causes the horizon to appear approximately 13 miles off, the 47 miles remaining means the Welsh coastline should still fall on impossible 1,472 feet below the line of sight. In the Times newspaper, Monday, October 16, 1854, in an account of Her Majesty's visit to Great Grimsby from Hull, the following paragraph occurs. Their attention was first naturally directed to a gigantic tower which rises from the center here to the height of 300 feet and can be seen 60 miles out at sea. The 60 miles of nautical and this is always understood when referring to distances at sea would make 70 statute miles to which the fall of 8 inches belongs, and as all observations at sea are considered to be made at an elevation of 10 feet above the water, for which 4 miles must be deducted from the whole distance, 66 statute miles will remain, the square of which multiplied by 8 inches, gives a declination towards the tower of 2,904 feet, deducting from the south altitude of the tower, 300 feet, we obtain the startling conclusion that the tower should be at the distance at which it is visible, more than 2,600 feet below the horizon. Dr. Samuel Robotham, Earth Not a Globe, 2nd edition, 174. 39. Indoctrinated naysayers will often retort that light refraction off the water's surface could account for such phenomena. To begin with, the idea that we cannot differentiate between the refracted light of something and the thing itself is preposterous, but even assuming we couldn't, surveyors general allowance for refraction is only one twelfth the altitude of the object observed, making it a completely implausible explanation. Using the previous example of 2,600 feet, divided by 12 gives 206, which subtracted from 2,600 leaves 2,384 feet that the tower should have remained below the horizon. In September, 1898, I received a letter from Australia, in which the writer says, in the year 1872 I was on board, the ship Thomas the Captain, supply. It was. Then my hobby to get the first glimpse of land, make a survey, just as the sun would be rising. The island was clearly in view, well on the starboard bow, I reported. This to Captain Gibson. He disbelieved me, saying it was impossible as we are 75 miles distant. He, however, offered me paper and pencil to sketch the land I saw. This I did. He then said, You are right, and shaped his course accordingly. I had never seen the island before and could not have described the shape of it. Had I not seen it, St. Helena is a high volcanic island, and if my informant had seen the top only, there would have to be an allowance made for the height of the land, but as he sketched the island he must have seen the whole of it, which should have been 3,650 feet below the line of sight, if the world view globe, dash, on the swim ship, Zetetic Cosmogony, 21, 
and Chambers Journal, February 1895, a sailor near Mauritius in the Indian. Ocean reported having seen a vessel which turned out to be an incredible 200 miles away. The incident caused much heated debate in nautical circles at the time, gaining further confirmation in Aden, Yemen where another witness reported seeing a missing Bombay steamer from 200 miles away. He correctly Orton, stated the precise appearance, location and direction of the steamer all later corroborated and confirmed correct by those on board. Such sightings are absolutely inexplicable if the Earth were actually a ball 25,000 miles around, as ships 200 miles distant would have to be well over 4 miles below the line of sight. Astronomers are in the habit of considering two points on the Earth's surface, without, it seems, any limit as to the distance that lies between the stars, being on a level, and the miles high. The idea is simply monstrous, and can only be entertained by scientists whose whole business is made up of materials of the same description, and it certainly requires no argument to deduce from some science is this, a satisfactory proof that the earth is not a globe. Every man in full command of his senses knows that a level surface is a flat or horizontal one, but astronomers tell us that the true level is the curved surface of a globe. A. Know that man requires the level surface on which to live, so they give him one in. Name which is not one in fact. This is the best that astronomers, for their theoretical science, can do for their fellow creatures. Deceive them. William Carpenter. 100 proofs the Earth is not a globe. 18. 28. Vast areas exhibit a perfectly dead level, scarcely rise, existing through 1,500 miles, from the Carpathians to the Urans, south of the Baltic. The country is so flat that a prevailing north wind will drive the waters of the Staten area into the mouth of the Oder and give the river a backward flow 30 or 40 miles plains of Venezuela and New Granada in Ordo. South America chiefly on the left of the Orinoco are termed dry lanos, or level fields. Often in a space of 270 square miles the surface does not vary a single foot. The Amazon only falls 12 feet in the last 700 miles of its course, the lot. Plata has only a descent of 1 33rd of an inch a mile. Reverend T. Milner, Atlas of Physical Geography. These extracts clearly prove that the surface of the Earth is level, and that, therefore, the world is not a globe. And when we come to consider the surface of the world under the sea, we shall find the same uniformity of evidence against the popular in nature of man. Professor W. B. Carpenter, article, The Deep Sea and Its Contents. The writer says, if the bottom of the mid-ocean were laid dry, an observer standing on any spot of it would find himself surrounded by a plain, only comparable to that of the North American prairies or the South American campus, the form of the depressed area which lodges the water of the deep ocean is rather, indeed, like a out of pain. Writer tells of thousands of miles in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Great Southern Ocean beds being a plain surface, and from his remarks it is clear that a flat surface is the general contour of the bed of the great oceans for tens of thousands of square miles. Dash. Thomas Winship, Zetetic Cosmogony, 23.
Thank you for watching this video please remember to press the red subscriber button.